Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to install an onboard air system onto the Chevy Suburban 2500 for Blue Ridge Overland gear. We're not going to be using a traditional ARB or VI air compressor with this build. We're actually going to be using a York compressor. Now, a York compressor is actually built as an AC compressor. It's an old time AC compressor that was used back in the 70s and the 80s on most domestic vehicles. Um, the Jeep crew and the Toyota guys figured out a long time ago that you could actually turn these into 100% duty cycle air compressors. Old, old school rock crawlers and mutters, you guys know what I'm talking about. So we're going to be installing that onto the Chevy Suburban here behind me. Um, this is not going to be a full in-depth um, walkthrough, step-by-step -step type of deal. This is going to be more of an overview. Obviously, to install one of these, you either need to find a manufacturer that builds a kit or you're gonna to have to custom make it yourself. Now, for the Chevy Suburban, the Silverado, the Duramax, the 2009 and up Rams, um, you can get a kit already pre-built for you from Little Shop Manufacturing out of Tennessee, and that's actually who we're gonna be using for this build. Um, you can also buy a universal bracket from them, and they'll sell you the compressor as well, and you can kind of fab up your own if you've got some fa fabrication skills and some welding skills. So, there's different options out there for you. I've got this exact same setup on my Dodge Power Wagon, so I can't wait to get this one installed on the Blue Ridge Overland Gear Suburban. Using the brackets provided with the kit, I just moved the engine control module away from the motor and closer to the radiator. That gives us enough room to mount the York compressor right next to the power steering pump. So we ran into a little bit of a snag with the uh, compressor bracket install. Let me show you what we got. The way this bracket is designed, it's supposed to bolt into this lower bolt hole mount down here. The problem that we're having right now is on this side, this nut get the light on it right here on the back of the power steering pump is actually a stud built into the back of the power steering pump and it holds it to a bracket and that is interfering with our bracket and preventing it from bolting up to the side of the truck or side of the motor here what i've had to do to counteract that you can see where i've relief cut the bracket doing our final test fit here before i sand all this up and repaint it so that's a win now we just got to take it all back apart we wiped it down with some cleaner degreaser. We painted it with Rust-Oleum Rust Pro Grade Truck Bed Liner. Assembly of the compressor is pretty much straightforward. You have your York compressor that has a snout on the end of it that your electromagnetic clutch is going to slide onto. It's got a mounting bracket that actually bolts to the case of the compressor and then it has a bolt that goes down the front into the shaft. This kit also comes with an air filter and a stainless discharge hose and the fittings that go on the compressor. Along with the compressor, it also came with the single wire um, weather pack connector to match up the one that's already pre-installed on the clutch. To fill the York compressor, this is a standard York compressor. It is not the high performance one that they sell. So this is basically the one that you would buy from any auto parts store. They recommend using non-detergent SAE 30. Um, in their instructions, they actually give you a part number for a Valvoline brand, but little known tip or hint is uh, that Napa oil is actually made by Havoline and Valvoline. So if you buy Napa oil or Napa brand oil, you're actually buying Valvoline oil. You're just getting it at a much cheaper price. Also provided in the kit is this syringe or baster or whatever the heck you want to call it. And then this handy little dipstick. Put this and your dipstick into a bag and keep that in the vehicle with you at all times. And then worst case scenario, you just need to pick up some oil.
Okay, after torquing this center bolt down to 20 to 25 foot-pounds, this assembly is now ready, spins freely. We've got our cable coming out of the top of the cl uh, compressor clutch here, and then you may have noticed I installed this bracket that came with the kit. That's to hold the wire and bring it around to the side, so that way this will be on the engine side and can plug into the wire that will run to the compressor. So that is ready. We need to mount this in the truck now. Then we can plumb all of our fittings. Now that the compressor is bolted up, we've installed our new belt that's longer. Um, this belt is part number specific or kit specific, depending on the vehicle, and they give that part number to you in the kit. So I've got that installed and routed. Next thing we need to do is install the ports on top. So we'll take our caps off here. And it's clearly labeled on the head of the compressor, discharge, uh, suction and discharge. So for our suction side, it's gonna be our air filter. And this is the air filter that they send with the kit. The nice thing about this one is it's serviceable. Just twist that and you've got full access to your filter element. The other nice thing about the York style compressors is this one's using a compression fitting, so it's got an O-ring seal in here. So you can pretty much clock this thing whichever direction you want. If you want it there, here, wherever you want it. So we're gonna put it just like this. We're not gonna completely plumb this air system just yet. We've got a couple more things that we wanna order for it and have to figure out the air tank location. If you were going to install this on your vehicle, um, just, just like this setup here, the only extra thing that we need right now would be a um, high pressure switch or a pressure cutoff switch. Usually they're around 90 PSI turning on and about 120 to 150 PSI turning off. You want to install that in line with this wire going to the clutch so that way when you turn your switch on, it'll pressurize until it sees that 125 or 150 PSI and then it will disengage the clutch. I don't want you to feel like you've missed out on anything because we didn't finish this up. So what I'm going to do is give you a demonstration of how the air system works on our power wagon. Underneath the hood of our power wagon, you can see we have the exact same York 210 compressor installed. The only difference between ours and the one that we put on the Blue Ridge truck is our discharge is on the passenger side of the vehicle instead of the driver side of the vehicle. So our intake comes in on this side, runs through the compressor, it's compressed and discharges out through this dryer and through this manifold. Now right here is our pressure switch for our AC compressor electromagnetic clutch. So basically when we turn the switch on inside the cab, power runs through the harness into the switch. It completes the circuit and continues to run down to the clutch and engages the clutch. At 125 PSI, this thing reaches its limit. The switch then opens, opening the circuit and shutting the clutch off. Once the pressure drops below the 125 PSI again, it will then engage and fire back up and run back to that point. So this is the fail safe for the electromagnetic clutch. Now, the other thing that you wanna install when you do this is that you wanna have some type of dryer or oil catch can because this is a mechanical compressor. And as you saw earlier, we had to fill it with oil. So that oil is gonna be running through the system and we need somewhere to catch that before it gets into everything else. You will still have a little bit of oil outside, inside your air fittings and your lines, but that's also gonna help keep everything lubricated for you. Right here, you notice, is a pop-off valve. This is a 200 PSI pop-off valve. So if this switch fails and this compressor continues to run, instead of swelling to the point where it bursts lines and everything else on the truck or grenades the inside of this compressor, this pop-off valve, it's spring-loaded and it'll start to dump air. And at that point in time, it saves the system. Also on this, you can see I have a manifold that has multiple ports on it, and then I have a gauge so I can see what my pressure is reading. And then this line here runs all the way down to the front bumper on the truck where our air chuck is. Now, the one thing I don't have on this system that if I had a tank, I would definitely want to put on is a check valve. Normally, you would install that right before your dryer or even right after, right before your manifold, so that way no air can leak back to the compressor. At this point in time on my truck, if you fire this up and run, when the compressor cuts off at 125 PSI, the air will slowly bleed back through this system because there is no check valve. There's no way to prevent it from coming back. A check valve is a very cheap um, 
a cheap valve that just basically threads in, in line with that and it's not that big of a deal to install. But since I'm going directly to an air truck, it's not really a high priority for me. If I was storing this air into a tank like we're going to do on the Brog truck, that's a definite must have. So let me fire the truck up. I'll engage the compressor and you can see how it's going to cycle on this. And you'll also be able to see the gauge going back and forth. Now this type of setup is gonna be a little bit more expensive than buying an ARB. Ask me how I know. My wife still makes fun of me for that because on our power wagon, it was completely custom. This one being a bolt-in, for the most part, other than the little modification I had to make to it, being a bolt-in system, it usually runs somewhere in the neighborhood of about $700. Now, you still have to put a pressure switch in, which is roughly 20 bucks, if even that. You still gotta run airlines, but you'd have to run airlines on your ARB as well. Um, you have to buy a serpentine belt, which is like 30 bucks. But really, for, so we'll call it what, maybe $100 more in extras over the ARB, you've now got something that's engine driven and is a 100% duty cycle. So basically, if you've got an air tool that you wanna run and you wanna zap tires off or you wanna cut exhaust off or you gotta cut a, an axle or you know a control arm or something on the trail, as long as you can run your engine, this thing will be able to do it. Now the trade-off is gonna be your engine has to run unless of course you have a storage tank. And honestly, you shouldn't be running a Viar system or an ARB system with the engine off anyway. The amount of amperage that the thing pulls is just about enough to cause your battery to go dead after you you know, inflate four or five tires, especially if you're helping your buddies inflate their tires on the trail as well. So there are benefits to both, but in my mind, the mechanical pump AKA the York compressor is probably the best way to go because it is a 100% duty cycle. I can just keep on going. I don't ever have to stop until I'm ready to stop. ARBs and Viairs, you have to stop. They have to cool down. They, 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 don't, they don't have the ability to be a 100% duty cycle. So like I said, there are, there are trade-offs. I can't run this without starting my truck. You can on an ARB if you absolutely have to, say you're airing up a beach ball or something like that, you could technically do that. So. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.